Hey everyone, I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek of the build before we get into it. So, hear me out. Osmosis. Probably a perk that you always see and immediately delete any gun that has it, right? But it's good. In this build. Without the seasonal artifact. Using your grenade ability changes this weapon's damage type to match your subclass until you stow it. That's pretty awesome. I happen to have it on Fatebringer, which is which is good, but you can, I mean, whatever gun works. You can look up um, light.gg, I'll put a link in the description or whatever other site you use, um, and look up the perk name and you can see whatever guns that uh, like roll with Osmosis. So Osmosis on Solar Hunter with Caliban's hand. Um, this makes your proximity knife ignite targets on a final blow, basically. And it scorches them, but that's not a huge deal. Um, we're running a bunch of stuff to get our uh, dodge and our knives up. You know, the, the usual like radiant when you hit a melee and all that stuff. Um, and then Buried Bloodline. I love this gun. I feel like a lot of people sleep on it. Um, it's not like it's, it's insane or like game breaking or whatever. But it just provides such good benefits for for a sidearm and, and for an exotic in general. I mean, you get Devour on any class that you want. And the Catalyst makes it to where when you have Devour, you weaken enemies for a 15% damage uh, bonus on a hit. And then you pair that with whatever heavy you want. Um, I'm using a rocket so I can take care of Overload Champions right now uh, in the Lost Sector that I'm going to show you. And like I said... I'm not using anything in the seasonal artifact that's helping me right now. I just decided to choose like random perks other than the taken one. That one's helping me a little bit in here. And then like my overload and my unstoppable hand cannon. That's all that I have going for me right now. So this build will work anytime. It's not it's not seasonal bound. But the seasonal artifact does make it better. So let's get into this uh, master law sector and I'll show you what it's about. Now I think Solar Surge is on in here, so that is a little bit of a discrepancy, but I still think this build can perform pretty well in Master Content. I tried to go into a GM solo to show some gameplay, but it didn't work out super well, and this build thrives a little bit on having teammates. So, um, the basis of the build. Kill four red bars, or one yellow bar with very Bloodline to get Devour. Throw your grenade to activate solar on your uh, osmosis weapon. And then it's a healing grenade, so that activates restoration. Your melee activates radiant. So now you have radiant, restoration, and devour all going. And as long as there's enemies, you can kind of just keep it up. And, well, you know, if you hit your shots. But if you miss, you just dodge, get your knife back. Um. That's, you know what, we're just gonna... So anyway, if you happen to throw your knife and you miss, you just dodge, you get it back, throw it again. And since we've got Devour active on Buried Bloodline, we get a Weaken off. Just a pocket Weaken whenever we want. Make our Fate Bringer Solar again, keep our Restoration and our Radiant up without the Seasonal Artifact, and you just keep going. Shield with buried bloodline. Pocket weakened. Throw a knife, dodge, throw another knife, ignition. Let's go finish him. These overload guys will let me. And then sometimes you run into a situation like this, where you don't have any of your abilities, but we have Ember of Benevolence on. So applying Restoration, Cure, or Radiant to allies grants you all of your ability, uh, like 400% increased regeneration. So you're going to be constantly throwing healing nades and constantly throwing knives everywhere, which give Radiant and Restoration to your teammates. So 
even if you don't have your dodge, throwing one healing grenade should give you your regeneration super quick. So you can get back to the loop again. And that's pretty much the loop. Get your devour active with buried bloodline. Throw your grenade with Fatebringer out to make it solar and get restoration. And then start throwing knives everywhere. Use a uh, buried bloodline to get your weaken off. The higher tier enemies. That's it. So let's go ahead and go through the build. We're on Solar Hunter. I like to run uh, Blade Barrage because it kind of just fits the knife slinging playstyle and it has a shorter cooldown than the other supers. We're running Gambler's Dodge so that when we dodge near an enemy, we get our melee back. So if we miss a knife or something, like I did earlier, uh, you can get your knife back. Triple jump, whatever you want to use. Proximity Explosive Knife. This is the one that you have to use because it works with Caliban's Hand, our exotic of choice. Caliban's Hand. Your proximity knife scorches targets, it damages with its explosions, or ignites targets on a final blow. So whenever we ignite something, uh, or whenever we kill something with our knife, they're going to blow up in an ignition. And then uh, the scorch is also going to help us get our dodge back. And then we run Healing Grenade to have that restoration in another way to proc Ember of Benevolence. Knock him down. So I like to run Knock him down just because it improves your Blade Barrage a little bit, makes it a little more potent. And then on your mark, I really like because it makes my reload faster and just makes our, my guns feel faster in general. Um, and it lets us have a third Fragment slot. Gunpowder Gamble is an option that you can use. But the third fragment slot, along with how fast your guns feel, is just really nice. And then Ember of Torches uh, for our fragments. Powered melee attacks against combatants make you and nearby allies radiant. Now, some of these fragments are open, like you can switch them out if you want to, but I feel like this one and Ember of Empyrean are necessary because this, when you hit an enemy with your melee, gives you radiant, and that's your that's your way to apply radiant. So you gotta have this one. And then this one. Ember of Empyrean allows you to extend your Radiant and your Restoration when you get Solar Ability kills. So these two together are like part of bre the bread and butter of the build. Like they are set in stone pretty much. And then I like to run Ember of Benevolence, like I said a second ago. Um, applying Restoration, Cure, or Radiant to allies grants you about, I think it's 400% increased grenade melee and class ability regeneration. So, if you're in, a, in one of those situations where you've thrown your knife, you dodged, you got it back, and you threw it, and you've used your grenade, and you don't have your dodge, you know, you, you're just out of all your abilities, this, this limits that, because whenever you're throwing those grenades and throwing those knives, you're proccing Ember of Benevolence on your teammates, whenever you're playing with teammates, and it gives you way more ability regeneration, so your abilities aren't down for as long if you run into those situations. And then I like to run Ember of Char, your Solar Ignition spread Scorch to affected targets. You could probably replace this with Ember of Eruptions, where your Ignitions have increased area of effect. But I like to have the Scorch going, because em Ember of Singeing, your class ability regenerates faster when you Scorch targets. So that also limits how long your class ability is going to be down for if you end up using it. But Ember of Benevolence, if you throw like one healing nade, you can pretty much get your class ability back, um, even with a lower mobility on Hunter. So you could probably swap these two out, or even all of these three if you're not looking for like a team, more team-based build. You could swap these three for whatever you felt was necessary for your situation or for how you want to play the build. And then uh, the weapons of choice. Uh, I like to use a gun with Osmosis, as I said earlier. It works very well for this build, combined with Buried Bloodline, because it allows your Fatebringer to become solar, so that when you get solar weapon or ability final blows, it keeps extending your restoration and radiant. So I can have a solar weapon, and a void weapon, and a different heavy if I want to. Um, I usually just run Apex with it. But you can have three different elements if you want to on your build, um, and it's really nice. And then. Uh, buried Bloodline is just Weaken Devour. You can have Devour on any subclass that you want to, 
and then the catalyst lets you uh, weaken enemies when you have devour active so it's just a really nice way to either make it easier for your knives to kill an enemy or mainly to weaken big enemies so that you can burst them down with your heavy weapon and then I already talked about Caliban's hand so uh, we can go ahead and move on to like our mods and everything I run kind of weird mods because I don't have the right uh, armor stats because I don't play on my hunter super often but I'm running font of wisdom so that I can get my intellect to a hundred so that I'm getting my uh, supers as fast as I can because that increases your intellect when you have armor charge but the main ones you could run are hands-on so you're getting bonus super energy on melee kills which you're always going to be doing or you could run dynamo reduces super cooldown when you're using your dodge and your targets or you could run both of those like if you don't want to run font of wisdom you could run this one you could run dynamo and then I run harmonic siphon just so that when we we are getting those Fatebringer kills, it's generating orbs for you and everyone on the team. And then on Caliban's hand, I'm running Font of Focus again just to increase my grenade regen a little bit. I could probably run something like uh, causing damage with a powered melee attack reduces your grenade cooldown. That might be a little bit of a better option. But the main one you're going to want is Heavy Handed, where your powered melee final blows create orbs of power so that you're just always generating orbs when you're throwing those knives. And then on your chest plate, or on my chest plate, I normally just like to run damage resistance mods because that is the best way to survive in higher end content. But you could kind of do whatever you want here. If you want to do a charged with light setup for something, then you could run charged up, you know, whatever you feel like doing. And then on the boots, uh, I just run one Solar Surge to make my uh, Fatebringer do a little bit more damage. And Fatebring or, uh, Hand Cannons just got that recent buff where they're doing a lot more damage to Yellow Bars. So Solar Surge combined with Kill Clip on a Hand Cannon does a lot of damage to Yellow Bar enemies. And then I run Innervation to make it to where uh, I get my Grenade Energy back a little bit faster since that's probably my slowest ability regen. Um, so that I can keep proccing Ember of Benevolence again with my teammates and getting my ability regen back faster. And then I run Insulation, reduces class ability cooldown when you pick up an orb, just so I can get my dodge back quickly and then keep throwing those knives. Then on my cloak, I run Time Dilation, uh, Bomber, and Distribution Bomber so that I can get my grenade cooldown back faster again when I dodge near targets. And then Distribution just as a general, like, Let's try and get abilities back faster. And it also helps with your super. Distribution helps with your super. It gives you about like 2% every time you dodge, which isn't a lot. But I've tried to focus this build on not only Caliban's hand and getting your abilities back faster, but also your super back faster. Since uh, Blade Barrage has the slowest or the fastest cooldown, I guess. And we've got gain bonus super energy on melee kills. Distribution giving you bonus super energy like 2% uh, when you dodge and making sure we're generating a lot of orbs as well. You should get your super back pretty quick, especially if you're in an activity with a lot of enemy density and they're not super high tier where you can just keep throwing your knives and, and keep exploding everything. You could run a uh, powerful attraction on your cloak. I've actually thought about putting that on instead of having something like bomber. Um, so that whenever you dodge, it's just picking up any of the orbs in your area, which would be really nice at just getting chunks of your super back without having to worry about going around and picking them up. So I might run that here in the future. Also, can we just, can we check out the Hunter Drip? I don't know if anyone else is going to like it, but I think this looks awesome. And it uses some like old armor too with the, the boots from, um, Spire, I think Spire of Stars, or no, Eater of Worlds, okay, yeah. Eater of Worlds, and I don't know, the helmet, the helmet I could change, maybe. I had a different helmet on at one point, I had this one, which also looks cool, but either way, I love how my hunter looks. But that's beside the point, I hope you enjoyed this build video, and you're thinking about going out and using it yourself, or maybe just implementing Buried Bloodline into different builds, like putting it on Arc, because then it gives you devour because arcs 
worst thing is healing. So you could just have Devour up constantly and do in some crazy arc builds on different characters or whatever you want to do. So go out there, have fun, and I will see you in the next video.